Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm going to be doing a review of the Cut Tech 8 inch benchtop spiral cutter head jointer. And this one has Teflon coated tables. So, really, what I'll be doing is unboxing it here, taking out all the parts. I apologize for having everything being handheld at the moment. I don't have a tripod. Later, when I do the review, I'll probably have better camera equipment. All right, so let's get started. I already cut these ahead of time because I knew they'd be a pain. All right, so we got more of these straps. Looks like they give you some parts that need to be assembled. It looks like a wrench as well and the safety lock. Annual, and I'll be right back after cutting these straps. Let's pop the styrofoam off the top. So far it looks pretty good. I've owned a couple joiners. I actually still own one and it's sitting outside. It's an old Craftsman. Um, the fence never stayed straight. I could, it never stayed square. Uh, and the first one I had was also a bench top one like this, but much smaller, another older Craftsman. So I'm excited. I'd say the price point is just right. Uh, this was $389. It does come with a spiral head, but it's not a helical head. Uh, in terms of how the cutting blades are. The, the cutting blades are the same, but they're staggered like two per row. They're not in, you know, in the helical style, I guess you would call that. Uh, so, but it's still the same as, as far as you can switch the blade over when it gets dull. I believe you have two sides that you can use instead of four. Uh, that would be normal, but you know, this isn't a Powermatic $2,000 joiner. This is uh, three. This was $389 on a special. Paid for shipping. It's about $45, and it actually came in three days. UPS ground, which is pretty nice. I ordered it on Saturday, and it's Wednesday, so I would say three business days. All right. So far, it looks like it's pretty smooth. Let's take a look. See, there's actually there's three per row there. I'm not going to spin it and, you know, maybe cut myself, so we'll look at that later. Uh, also, the good part of this is it also comes with an extending arm on each side. I believe it gives it around 50 to 55 inches of clearance. Let me get this completely out of the box and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so here we are. Everything's out of the box. Looks like we'll start with a manual. I'm sure it'll tell me how to assemble everything correctly. You know, part of the course. This looks like the fence assembly, along with the fence. Uh, everything feels to be aluminum, but doesn't feel too bad. Feels like it should hold up pretty well. Of course, came with the wrench, the safety key, came with a dust port. I believe it's two and a half inch to four inch. It came with some push blocks, which, you know, that's always nice of them to do. And then the, the unit itself, here we've got Dust blower, of course saying danger. There's both of the arms extended. Your safety. And then it looks like we have increment. Of course, with this I'll probably only, I'm not even sure what that does yet. But with this, uh, I, I'm only gonna go probably a 64th at a time. Uh, get a power switch. All in all, the weight feels pretty nice. It'll definitely be uh, easy to lug around. It's not like the lightest thing in the world, but for being a bench top joiner, that's what I needed. The space is very limited, so this will help. Uh, there you go, there's your power cable and I guess the rear bed that raises it up and down. So I'm gonna get this thing completely put together, run some boards through it, get that fence I guess I should get the fence straight first. I'll get the fence straight. All right, so I have the fence attached. 
I mean, that's really the only thing that needed to be assembled. Uh, as far as the instructions, they left a little to be desired. Um, pictures are kind of washed out, so it's, it's hard to tell what you're even looking at. It could have just been me, though. Anyway, after getting that set and using the set screws to make sure that the fence stays square, I haven't done the 45 yet because I probably will never use this for 45s. It's just going to be for edge joining. Um, everything looks pretty square. I'd say. So now, I'm going to plug it in and see how she runs. <coughs> Definitely louder than I thought it would be. Uh, the craftsman I have outside is fairly quiet, but then again, I am inside, so it could just sound louder because I'm in this kitchen. But I'm happy to say that it runs. Next, we'll get into cutting some lumber. Okay, so it's been about six months since I've had this. I, I was gonna film this sooner, but now I have the proper recording equipment. And uh, I have to say, it's really great. I'm going to go over some of uh, the things that I like, some of the things that I dislike, and I'm going to cut some lumber. So right off the bat, great machine. It does exactly what I needed it to do. It offers the size that I needed, and it cuts very, very well. The build quality is very nice. The fence has stayed square since I originally set it up. I haven't noticed any significant issues with it slowing down or bogging down on any certain type of lumber. I have actually used exotics, all the domestics, I've put Wenge through it. Uh, it has no issues slowing down or even stalling. It comes nowhere close to stalling. The bed extensions are great. They do what they need to do. But if I had a choice, I would somehow create something to lay over top of this if possible to make them actually solid so that I actually get the bed length out of it other than depending on just this portion of it to for the lumber to ride on as you can see this is where I work I'm just in my backyard I have no room basement or workshop to work out of right now so I needed something that I could pick up and move into a small closet that I have over here eventually I'll be building a wood shop up on the hill in my yard and I'll actually be filming different portions of that build so if you like what I'm doing with this content then subscribe and you'll be able to see the progress of my wood shop. So anyway let's cut some lumber. Got a nice chunk of black walnut here pretty rough. Uh, I set one end through my table saw but it doesn't look very good so I'm gonna edge and face joint this. As you can see, it's very, very smooth, aside from this piece here. It's just a defect in the wood, can't blame the joiner on that. But it's uh, very smooth, I'd say maybe 180 to 200 grit sandpaper. And uh, so is this side. Had no problems cutting the walnut. Throw a square on it. Like I said, I set the fence one time and one time is all it needed. It has stayed square, and that's from me picking it up, moving it, placing it on the floor, you know, leaning it up against my leg, putting it on the wall. I know I've hit the back of this a few times, and it's still square. It's great. All right, so let's go over the pros and the cons. I'm gonna start with pros for the obvious reason. You're watching this video, you know, you wanna know what's good about it, and honestly, I have a lot of good things to say about it. Pro number one would be the size. 
it's perfect for me to lug around. For the shopless woodworker, I needed something like this to stow away and bring out when I needed to use it. Another pro would be its power. For something this small and this affordable, it's great. The power is definitely where it's at, thanks to the spiral style cutter head. I haven't run into any issues, any lag on the machine, any chip outs on any of my wood. I've even used some figured maple and that takes care of it with no issue at all. And speaking of affordability, that's pro number three. This thing is very cheap. It, I wouldn't say cheap as in the build quality. I, when I say cheap, I merely mean the cost. Everything seems to be built very well and I have no complaints as far as the hardware of the machine. That'll give us three pros. I'm gonna do three pros and three cons. So those are my three pros. Con number one would be size, although I can't really say it's a con. I bought this machine knowing the size. I can't complain about something that I was already aware of. I purchased this because I needed it to be this size, but some of you may purchase it and think negatively of it because of its size, but just so you're aware, I'm seeing a lot of questions about this and that's why I'm doing this review. If they're good enough, if you know the size is right. I'd say the size is right. It, they could have made the bed slightly longer and just did away with these extension arms. The extension arms work, but they're not the best thing in the world. They could have improved that a bit or allowed you to have some sort of extra piece of hardware that could sit on top of this. Or they could have just made it that size. So I'd say the size of the bed would be con number one. Con number two would be noise. It's, uh, it's very noisy. Uh, and you know, I'm not expecting it to be quiet, but there are some moving parts in here that are a little squeaky when I turn off the joiner, which you'll be able to hear in this clip. I've noticed some squeaking. I don't know if it's because the oils or grease is wearing out already on it. That I'll have to monitor for a little while longer. Like I said, I've owned this for about six months now and I haven't ran into any issues with it, but with these noises that have started to pop up, it kind of makes me weary of how this machine will operate a year from now. And con number three, which would be probably the worst con out of all of them, the dust port sucks. If you do not have a vacuum hooked up to this, it will clog and it will shoot chips all out the back of it. It does not eject the chips just freestanding, or if you're just using the device without a vacuum, it does not eject the chips out of the dust port at all. I don't know if it's supposed to, but I would think with how everything's built, it should at least try to eject it out. Most of the time, it's piled up on the bottom here. And that's with a vacuum being hooked up to it. So keep in mind, you're gonna be scraping wood chips out of the dust port from time to time. If you have a very strong vacuum, which I don't, I just have a small rigid shop vac, it's not very good at doing the job, but I'm sure if you have a dust collection set up, you'll be fine. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like or subscribe. I will be posting many more videos in the coming future. Build videos, tool reviews, I'll be building a shed, so you'll be able to see how that progress goes, and if it helps anybody out, that's my goal. Thanks for watching, have a nice day.